everybody, welcome to Dak Man Productions and also welcome to Conahay Rail. Today we'll be comparing the Atlas of the Train Man 50.2 foot gondola car to the Lionel PS5 gondola to the MTH Premier gondola car. Uh, before we get started, I gotta say my famous disclaimer that this video is based on, solely on my own opinion um, and what I look for to purchase uh, rolling stock for Conahay Rail. Uh, there's three things I look for is uh, quality and detail, the uh, accurate uh, road names and also or accurate and realistic road names and also accurate uh, scale length and width of the cars. Um, so we'll we'll be comparing the, you'll notice the MTH has a load in it. Uh, we'll still, I still threw it in a comparison. You can buy Lionel, Lionel gondola cars with a load in them. Um, not sure if Atlas so has actually made them with a load. But uh, we'll, we'll look at all three of these. So this is the Atlas O Trainman series, 50.2 foot gondola car. The Trainman series doesn't have as much detail as their Master Series rolling stock. Uh, and it's still a scale car, and uh, we'll still be comparing it with the other two. This is the Lionel PS5 Gondola, uh, PS, which stands for Pullman Standard, who was the builder of the PS5. Um, we'll, com we'll compare that. Uh, you can get these, uh, some of these road names uh, with a load. Also, on another note, this is not the 66-foot mill gondola. Uh, Lionel has made that's actually uh, a totally different gondola which is longer and a little bit skinnier and uh, I will not be comparing it with these because I'm comparing uh, basically 50 foot gondolas in this video. This is the MTH Premier uh, gondola. Um, they don't seem to reference anything other than it's a gondola. Uh, so they're using pretty much a, a universal uh, description of gondola. But it, it seems to be the same scale length uh, as the Lionel PS5 and the Trainman 50.2 foot gondola. So um, it comes, it, it's pretty much scale length to uh, the actual 50 foot gondola car. Also uh, the same with the MTH Premier. Some of the road names come with load, uh, some do not. Uh, just keep in mind the load uh, on these gondola cars are very heavy. It makes the car very heavy. So um, whether it's a load like this one or the junk load it, it does weigh them down so you, you really don't want to uh, put too many of these on unless you're going to put some more uh, locomotive power at the head end um, so like three or four of them is okay but I wouldn't run a string of ten of them unless you know I had two powered locomotives pulling them uh, pretty much I, I try to buy them empty and then put lighter material in there, or put my own stuff in there. Alright, so this is the Atlas of the Train Man series, and as I explained, the Train Man series uh, is the next step below the Master series. Uh, it's still a scale car. It just doesn't have as much details as the uh, Master series does. Uh, let's take a look, for example. Uh, you'll notice that that grab rail is actually molded in to the body. If this had been a, a master series, that would have been separately applied. 
but uh, as far as the graphics, it still has the uh, wonderful crisp uh, grass graphics you would you would expect a a higher end car to have. So they did not skimp out on on the graphics end of it for sure. And and look at the details of the rivets. Even for a Tramian car, the the rivet details are so uh, wonderful, and they just popped. And now, uh, we go ahead and scroll down. And they actually, Conrail really did use model numbers like that GE51D for uh, the rolling stock. Alright, let's take a look underneath here. And for a Trainman series, you can see the the under details of the of the air tank and the frame rails and the wood decking. I mean, for a Trainman series, it still has quite a bit of detail. Uh, the Trainman series still has the uh, airline on the coupler, which is right here. Unfortunately, the Trainman series does not have rotating wheel bearing gaps. They are fixed friction uh, trucks, which would be incorrect for this error of car. Um, for for uh, the PS5 gondola would not have had friction bearing trucks. So I, if this was, uh, if I was continuing to run this, I would probably swap the trucks out. Uh, there was a guy I'm friends with. Uh, he's been swapping out these uh, friction trucks with uh, MTH roller bearing trucks, and he says they fit pretty well. So that's uh, a nice, uh, a good thought, and I'll have to check that out to see. Um, he says it's a direct swap, so so that's what he's been doing. And then there's your end. Pretty nice car. So here is a Lionel PS5. Pullman Standard 5 gondola car. And again, it's a uh, 50 foot uh, scale length. And uh, I really like this uh, Lionel version. It has separately applied handrails. Now you can see the difference as compared to the train man. It does have uh, nice detailed rivets. The graphics, which you would expect, are all there, including the uh, these graphics here. Why um, not? Did a real nice job on this PS Five. Take a look at inside this car. Let's see if I can show you guys this. There's your inside the deal. Well, that's something that the PS5 don't have. I mean, <laughs> sorry about that. That's something that the Atlas O doesn't have is this inside details. Here's the undercarriage uh, of the Lionel. They did it a nice job on the piping, the emergency brake actuator. I mean, the, the detail on this PS5 gondola is very nice.
This is the the Lionel uh, trucks do have rotating wheel bearing hats. See that? Compared to the train wheel, which doesn't. The Lionel version is lacking of uh, air brake line, but you could probably put one on here with no problem. And uh, look at that chain. I'm hoping I catch that. So this is a drop and gondola, which means the ends actually drop down. It's actually it does work. See that? Now oh, swivel. Now it's back in the place. So the ends of this gondola drop down. And the reason being is if you have a load that's oversized, you have a pipe that you want to put in here, but it's longer than the car. And um longer than a flat car. So you wouldn't want to really load it on a uh, a flat car for say. You would want to put it in a gondola. And you would chalk it up, you would drop this end down, and then the pipe would stick out the end, and then you would use a flat car as an idler car for the overhang. So that's why these were used, is for over length loads, such as pipes that were longer than 50 foot long. They could drop the end down, put a flat car on, the, on this end of it that for the overhang, and the pipe would just swing over the top of a flat car. In actuality, Lionel did come out with a set, uh, just, uh, over length car set, which came with the gondola and a flat car and over length pipes, which I do own that set as well. So it's nice to be able to model a uh, over length load and you can do it with this Lionel uh, PS5 gondola. So there's that, and the gondolas will haul anything from pipes to scrap loads to gla uh, crushed glass. They were used for uh, multiple things, recycling. So you would see these everywhere. Um, even to this day, you see them all over the place. And then you even see uh, unit gondola trains where there's nothing but gondola cars. So it's a very common site even for maintenance away I mean there's so many uses for these that um, every O gauge layout should have some alright on to the next one alright so this is the MTH Premier uh, gondola car this just came out last year uh, so this is their most current one you can see it has the proper uh, reflective tape for 2015 and newer uh, freight cars because this is a modern uh, piece of rolling stock that they're trying to model which is why the, the older gondola cars do not have reflective taping because Conrail was uh, long gone before uh, reflective tape was required so let's take a look at the uh, the details of, of this um, MTH Premier. And same thing, they have a uh, seems that, that the MTH used an actual uh, ladder one piece ladder instead of um, separately applied details on its one in the car. So I would like this better if, if the handrails were applied separately rather than using a, a ladder like that. And you can see uh, all the rivets, the details.
I'll see on this side of the car they did use uh, separately applied the uh, handrails, so I do like that. I find this step a little on the thick side. I mean, that's fine to make it more, uh, you know, see, it's good on one end because it's going to be harder to break, but as far as realistic scale, it's, it's quite out of scale. There's that end of the car. I do like that they use these airlines on our on our couplers though. That's pretty nice. All right, let's take a look underneath. And they catch some nice detail underneath. The air tanks, the uh, emergency brake actuator, so. They're, they're not too bad detailed. Um, hopefully I'm catching all this without blurring it. Now these, since these just came out last year, um, they still do not feature rotating wheel bearing cap trucks. It, it just boggles my mind why they wouldn't go ahead and put them on there, but I guess that's why, you know, they don't cost as much. So that's my only gripe is, is I like the rotating wheel bearing cat trucks. I think it might put them in a lower price point, but it really doesn't if you have to upgrade them. All right, so these loads are removable. They simply pop right out just like that. There's the inside. There's not really much detail into the inside other than the wood floor, similar to the Atmosode Train Man series. But you can remove the load on these. Uh, after a while, uh, due to the vibration uh, of the train running, it will mark up, the load will mark up the inside of the car, so a trick that you could use is to put a thin layer of plastic on the inside before you put this down, and that protects the inside from getting scratched up if you don't care, and you're weathering yours anyway, or putting different loads in it, then that's fine. But I just wanted to give that tip. So, who is uh, number one here, in my own opinion? Well, it's, to me, it's clear cut. It's going to be Lionel, the PS5. And the reason being is because it has the rotating wheel bearing caps, it has the detailed interior, it has a little bit more detail on the undercarriage, and you can drop the ends down for an oversized load. So to me, it makes it a, a better gondola. And uh, I would actually buy more of those. So uh, let's do some price points. So the Lionel version uh, goes for around $45. Uh, that's without the covers. Um, Lionel does sell that same PS5 with covers on it. Um, they go for more money. They're right around $65. The Atlas O Train Man also goes for $45. The MTH Premier with the load it goes for 63 but remember there is a load on that one so I'm going to try and find a MTH version without a load and some of the ones without the the MTH premiere without the load or a small load is right around 60 bucks so if it wasn't for wood, they'd probably be in the same price range, right around $55. So they're all pretty much comparable. 
in a price range uh, for what they are um, so like I said I would probably buy um, the Lionel version I would buy those first only because like I said for Conahay Rail I'm looking for accurate detail accurate scale and realism so those are the those are the things that I look for not that the other two aren't bad cars either because I do own them obviously as well but I just wanted to put that uh, comparison out there for you guys and also a reminder these are these were made within the last uh, these two are made within the last two or three years this one that came out last year so these are pretty much current production uh, pieces of rolling stock and the reason why I keep mentioning the age or when they came out is because you'll notice a lot of the rolling stock even though it's standard oil that came out in the early 2000s was uh, pretty much not the scale and toyish like but the manufacturers within the last five five years have really been stuck stepping up the details and and uh, accurate road names and, and stuff like that so i hope you enjoyed another dac man productions video and uh we'll see you guys later